Joseph was asked, can you interpret this dream? Joseph didn't say, hey, I did it before. Joseph didn't say, I think I can. Joseph said, give me a try. Joseph said, no, I cannot, but my God can do it. And that's what I want to tell you this morning. Faith is not about what you can do. It's not even about your prayer or how much you fast. Faith is about knowing that God can do something when he wants to do it. Joseph said, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say God can do it. So if God does it, God gets the glory. If God doesn't do it, well, then that's his business too. When Joseph was asked this, he totally lifted up God. You need to understand that the supernatural offers itself up to you and me every day. God will put us in situations where he wants to glorify his name. All we have to do is have the faith to say, God can do this. God can make a way. God can heal the sick. God can deliver the afflicted. God can deliver the addicted. God can set the captive free. And God can do the supernatural. But you and I have to believe it. You and I have to say, my God can do this. Too many times Christians get wrapped up in these big supernatural prayers that they think the power is in their words. Too many times Christians get up in what they think. I'm here to tell you this morning, it has nothing to do with us. It's all about God. I cannot do it, but God can. You have to keep your divine appointments. You have to keep your divine appointments. When God has a divine appointment, you need to be faithful and you need to be there and see what God's going to do. God opened the door to Joseph. And guess what? Joseph stepped right through it. The thing you do is you have to keep the faith to put God in the middle of it so he can glorify his name. Put God in the middle of it so he can glorify his name. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know if there's something happening in your family. I don't know if there's something happening in your, in your job. I don't know if there's something happening in your relationship. I, I don't know what's going on in your life. I, I don't talk to all of you. But I know this. God's going to give you an opportunity to show your faith in the middle of it. In the middle of it. God's going to give you an opportunity to show your faith. God's going to give you an opportunity to bring God into the mix. To bring God into the picture. To say, you know what, this isn't about me. My, my job and my problem at work isn't about me. It's about you, God. Will you do something? Will you step through? In chapter 40, in, in the same chapter, verses 41 through 45, this is what happened. The Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of this whole land. The Pharaoh took his ring and he handed it to him. He dressed him in his robes. He put fine linen on him. He put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in his chariot next to him as his second in command. When he drove by, people shouted, make way. Next, he put Joseph in charge of all the Egypt. The Pharaoh told, told Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without you or your word, nothing will happen in Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zephanathapaniah. Zephanathapaniah. And he gave him the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On, to be his wife. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by his wife, the daughter of, of Potiphar, the priest of Ai. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh, and he named the second one Ephraim. And Joseph would be restored to this temple. Now, how does God do this? How does God do this? How does God take a man, a little boy from a pit, and move him to a prison? How does, move, God, how does God move a little 16-year-old Hebrew boy from the desert taking care of sheep? How does God move him from the desert taking care of sheep? He's out in the middle of nowhere, yet God would move him from this desert all the way to the seat of Pharaoh. You know what? It ain't for you and me to question how God does what he does. It ain't for you and me to sit there we just have to keep the divine appointments. And guess what? You only get one crack at this life. You only get one chance at being a husband and being a wife. You only get one chance, one life to be the best husband you could be, to be the best wife you could be. You only get one, one life to be the best follower of Christ that ever lived. You only get one chance at this life. One chance is all you get. God said, I, there's coming a famine so bad, so dark in all the land. And I got it. the only person in this whole land is a little Canaanite boy who will love me and will serve me. How do I get him from the desert?
How do I get him from that desert to the throne of Egypt? God threw him to a pit. From a pit, he put him in a prison. And from a prison, he put him in a palace. That's what our God does. That's what our God does. There's no shortcuts in what God does. Some of you are wondering why you're going through what you're going through right now. You might be in a pit, you might be in a prison, but guess what? God might have a palace prepared for you if you will be faithful in what he has offered you. You only get one chance at this life. And the secret is this. What did he name his children? Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh, which means it is because God has made me forget all my trouble from my father's house. He named his son every time he said his son's name. Every time he said Manasseh, ven para acá. I don't know if they spoke Spanish. But every time he said, Manasseh, come here. What he was saying is, God made my past disappear. God made my past go away. God got rid of the pain and the hurt and the shame is behind me. That's why God can take him from a pit all the way to a palace. And then the next one, Phinehas, which means, which means my God is good and he has been fruitful. You know something, whatever you're going through, you need to be telling yourself, the past is the past, and my God is good. Yeah. My God is good. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. I want to ask you this morning a real easy question. Are you sitting here this morning regretting this life? Are you sitting here this morning regretting this life? Are you saying to yourself, what happened? My God can change it all right now. Right now. Right now. He can change it and turn it upside down. You have to keep the faith in the middle of this. You have to keep your divine appointments in the middle of this. And you have to forget about the past. Please close your eyes. Is there anybody here this morning tell me, Pastor, this life isn't quite turning out the way I thought it was. Every eye is closed, every head is bound. Every eye is closed, every head is bound. Is there anybody this morning that would just raise your hand so I can see it wherever you are? Just raise your hand and put it down. Just one hand, two hands, three hands, four, five. Hands all over the place. Thank you, you can put them down. Hands went up everywhere. Even in the balcony, I saw your hands. I would tell, this, I tell you this morning, let go of the past. Forget about all the mistakes you've made. Give your life to Jesus and let him transform you right now. Right now. I want everybody to repeat this prayer after me. So that these seven or eight people are praying by themselves. Everybody's going to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. And I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I ask you right now to forgive me. Change me. I want to live for you. Amen. If you pray that and you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He can forgive your sins, your life changes today. You just got to believe that. And for the rest of you, you're going to get an opportunity this week to show how great God is. Somebody's going to come to you sick. Somebody's going to come to you with a problem. Somebody's going to come to you with an issue or something. Are you going to take a chance like Joseph did and say, you know what? This belongs to God. Or are you just going to Coward and hide like you've always done before. I believe God can step in to that situation and do something miraculous. If you gave your life to Jesus Christ this morning, I want you to come talk to me. I'll be standing up here after the service. I want you to tell me, Pastor, pray for me this week. We're going to have church on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You need to be here. You need to get into a Bible study. We do that Sunday night, Wednesday night at, at 7 o'clock. Tonight, we're, we're going to have a prayer service at 6 o'clock. We have worship and then we pray. We have tonight Bible study. And then you can be here Sunday morning for Bible study. And then the service starts at 11. But you need to make a decision. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the way things are going. How many believe God can change your life? Say amen. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up right now. Jesus.